Hello everyone! It is Thursday evening, which means it is time to go over this week's episode of Agatha All Along. This is episode 4. We are almost at the halfway point. It's a weird thing with odd numbers. There really is no like middle point. You just have before the halfway point and then after the halfway point. <clears throat> anyway, as usual, we're going to get into what I thought about the episode and some light to kind of serious spoilers. Once again, still just kind of entertained. I mean, so far the episodes haven't really been like super amazing. Oh my god, these are so special uh, episodes of television. They've just been fine. Like, I'm not bored. I'm sitting there enjoying myself, having fun. Was not expecting a uh, a jam session this episode, but it was kind of neat. And actually, uh, the way that this trial was overcome, I thought was kind of neat. Um, so actually, I'm just gonna get into the details. Uh, that's my spoiler-free thing. I I'm still liking the show. And I'm still going to keep going watching it. At the sort of halfway point, I think I can confidently call this show a, a B. Like a, a B rating. Not fantastic, but not awful. Just somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the upper middle. So anyway, this episode was Alice's Trial. Uh, the lady who we were trying to figure out what happened to her mother, which we learned that she and presumably others in her family have been suffering from a generational curse, which Alice confronts in this episode. I'm going to be real. I liked the whole idea that a witch through a popular song you was able to protect her daughter even after she was gone. Like, uh, Lorna, which is Alice's mother, her version of the Ballad of the Witch's Road, she created as a protection spell against the her family's curse. So, so long as that song is played, so long as people keep listening to that song, Alice was safe. I thought that was kind of neat. So yes, we get a jam session with all the witches and teen, uh, including the reappearance of Rio, our green witch, which I'll get into her in a minute. There's definitely some stuff there I want to talk about that I've seen online that I'm not sure how I feel about, but we'll get into that later. Uh, Honestly, even just as far as music goes, wasn't bad. I, I was I kind of enjoyed it. <clears throat> so anyway, moving on to Rio, the Green Witch, who is just weird <laughs> and kind of psychotic, and oddly enough, I like characters like that. I, I like the sort of weird, nothing phases them. They're there having a good time, even when, you know, horrible shit is happening around them. And there's an air of lethality to her. I like, I like her there. I like seeing that still kind of hostile animosity between her and Agatha. The, the moment where uh, she uh, is prompting Agatha through saying, you know, horrible things. Like how, you know, she wants to watch Agatha kill everybody and then she uh, gets the bodies once Agatha's done. And says this while playing it over a loudspeaker. Because I guess she's just a rotten bitch that way. <laughs> I definitely want to see more of Agatha and Rio and their past together, because it's very quite obvious they had been a thing 
in the past. <laughs> uh, Rio's sort of story by the campfire kind of confirms that. <laughs> and it also confirms that she did something to Agatha that hurt her, which might explain the whole, you know, why Agatha hates seeing her. <laughs> so the thing that I have seen online recently is some people are theorizing that Rio might not just be a witch, she might be death herself. Uh, in the Marvel comics, in the cosmological hierarchy, death is a, death does have a physical manifestation. In the comics, um, trying to win the love and affection of death herself is what drives Thanos to collect the Infinity Stones, gems, as they're in the comics, uh, to, you know balance everything out by eliminating half a life. Um, Deadpool and Death have a, uh, they can't ever really be together because Deadpool can't die. That, that, that type of romance. I'm not sold that she's Death. Although there's definitely, indi they definitely drop a few things that maybe want to lead people to think that. Again, the whole, I want to watch you kill people and then I get the bodies. Um, her little campfire story of how she, the way she hurt Agatha was by doing something she didn't want to do, but it is her job. Which, I know there's been several um, fictional pieces, prop properties and media that have tackled this idea that, you know, Death is not cruel and unkind. Death is just doing Death's job. Uh, particularly in the Discworld novels, which, if you haven't read the Death novels of Discworld, I know it's a very heavy, heavy, heavy topic, but uh, seriously, go read those. They are fantastic. Anyway, um, and the moment when Teen is wounded and she, Agatha snaps at the clairvoyant for not being helpful and Rio's just kind of looking at him and Agatha does the whole don't. Like, almost like she's asking her not to do something. Which, it's weird because we saw her, we saw Rio heal the knife wound she gave Agatha in the first episode. Which would give the indication that she has some kind of healing power. But if she did, why wouldn't Agatha have her use it? Which makes me wonder if it's not really healing. If there's something else going on there. I definitely don't think she's entirely human. Like, there's something inhuman, not capital I inhuman. We're not going there. I definitely think there's something inhuman about her. The whole demonic voice that she plays off and just there's something not right with Rio but I could be mistaken as I was mistaken in my last video when I talked about how I thought that teen was going to wind up being Agatha's son Nicholas Rio confirms that he's not in this episode so back to having no fucking clue who this kid is that's assuming Rio can be trusted. Now, granted, we don't really think... I don't think we have any reason to distrust her. So... I, I, I don't know. we got a couple of different mysteries going on here that I, I want to know the answer to. I want to know what the hell's going on with Rio. Who, who is she? And who the hell is this kid? And Agatha makes a point that's like... Until the hex that's on him is no longer needed, which is presumably through someone's demise, it's gonna stay stuck there. But Rio might know who he is. If she knows enough to say that he's not Nicholas, she might know who he is. I don't know. Either way, I'm excited for next week. 
and I'm going and I want to know what happens. I want to see who's our next trial going to be. It's we've done Jen and Alice, so it's either the clairvoyant, Rio, Agatha, or maybe even Teen himself. And that would put us at episode eight with those four. So, and then the big finale, the end of the road. Anyway, that's all for me this week. I'll see you guys next time.